We're going to call the meeting to order. Roll call. Mr. Hearn. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Dacula. Here. Mrs. Beaver. Here. Does anyone do the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, do any board members desire to add to lead or separate any of the items of the consent agenda as proposed? No? All right. I need a motion to approve the meeting agenda as presented for the regular board meeting on April 18th, 2022. So moved. Support. Roll call. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Beckler? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. This time I need a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting held on March 21st, 2022. So moved. Support. Roll call. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Dacula? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, are there any board members with correspondence? Yes, I see. Received notice of resignation for Mr. Stout and Mr. Curtis, which you will act on later in the meeting. Um, can you continue recognizing our guests and visitors? We have a few guests with us today. If you please just quickly introduce yourself. Tommy Ramirez. Jane Harris. Cindy Finkelman. Very rude. Dr. Lewis Lankford. Stanford. Alexis Howell. Terry Riddle. Terry Brown. Both Brown. John Brown. Jenny Conway. Derek Stout. Sean Brennan. Pretty small. Awesome. Thank you. Seeing that no one has registered to address the board, we'll continue on to uh, Mr. Carroll with our financial reports. Thank you. A couple of items before we get to the reports. Um, just so we have our income tax levy that is still on for May 3rd. Uh, later in the agenda, you will see a uh, resolution for uh, purchase of school buses. And as a reminder, this is um, using last year's bids, we are able to purchase these before we uh, see a price increase in May. And once we purchase these and pay for these, these school buses, um, the invoice, we will actually get $135,000 back in the state of Ohio when we make this purchase. Next week, we will receive our last income tax collection for this fiscal year. So when we get that, I will uh, let you guys know how that comes in. Um, in the treasurer's office right now, we are currently working with uh, departments one on one, setting up budgets for next year and wrapping up this year's budgets and closing out as many purchase orders as we can. There's a couple transfers on um, this financial consent agenda, and we are just kind of consolidating um, previous year's grants just to kind of clean things up just a little bit. And another transfer you'll see is the, the high school is asked to transfer foreign language club money into uh, to be used in foreign language class. And next month, we will have an update on our five year forecast. So you guys will see those. Uh, normal reports for this month uh, cash reconciliation, showing that we balance to the bank. Have our fund summary this is how we are appropriated uh, with the auditor right now. So uh, the percent expended, that middle column cannot be over 100%. So we are correctly appropriated with the county auditor. Then you have our disbursements that we've made through uh, for the month of March. And finally, the cash summary report that is the balance and all of the funds that we have in the district. And then the general fund graph and payroll graph, uh, outlining how we are doing according to the forecast right now. So everything looks good. You can see our cash balance there is in the in line with last year. Like I said, next week we will be getting our final income tax statements. So that will be pretty much the last revenue that we receive this year. Questions on those reports? That is all right. Great. So at this time, we'll move on to the financial part of the agenda. We'll need a motion to approve the March 22 financial reports we just reviewed with Mr. Carroll. 
need to accept the $100 anonymous donation to the Student Assistance Fund. Um, we also need to approve the following appropriations modifications and to amend resources accordingly and increase the Ohio K through 12 network conductivity grant for $5,400, a transfer of $2,709 to the SOS grant, a transfer of $9,648 to the SOS grant, and transfer of $715.60 also to the SOS grant, and a transfer up to $350 from the foreign language to high school supplies. At this time, I just need a motion to approve the March 22 financial reports and other financial items. So moved. Questions Please. or discussion? Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Beckwith? Yes. Mr. Seaver? Yes. Motion carries. At this time, we move on to personnel. We need a motion for a non renewal of all supplemental and people service contracts, such as coaches, club and moderators. Um, et cetera, for the 21-22 school year effective at the conclusion of the current school year. We need to accept the resignation of Derek Stout, um, athletic director, Mr. Stout. Resignation will become effective July 31st. We need to also accept the resignation of Dan Curtis, EHS principal. Mr. Curtis's resignation will become effective on July 31st of 2022 as well. We need to offer the final teacher a one-year limited teaching contract effective with the start of 22-23 school year with an extended and additional 25 days at the per diem rate, Alexa Towell for as cultural teacher. We also need to um, offer a two-year administrative contract effective August 1st of 2022 to Cheryl Brown, elementary principal, at an initial salary of $88,000 with 10 transitional days at a per diem rate. We need to approve the following school summer school coordinators for a maximum of 50 hours each to coordinate summer school instruction on an hourly basis for the negotiated agreement. Elementary will be Diane Pickering. Middle and high school is Shane Bergman. We also need to approve the following district substitutes for 21-22 that you can see there with their following positions. And to approve Mr. Joe Blackstone as a summer custodial worker as needed from May 30th until August 11th of 2022 Compensation is set at $12 per hour at a maximum of 40 hours per week. The superintendent or the superintendent's designee will make all work assignments. At this time, I we just need a motion to approve the above listed personnel positions. So move support. Questions or discussion? All right, so far. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Backo? Yes. Mrs. Keeper? Yes. Motion is carried. All right, we move on to other business. <clears throat> we need a motion to approve a three year negotiated agreement between the Evergreen Local Board of Education and the Ohio Association of Public School Employees, as recommended by the board's negotiation team and ratified by the association. This agreement includes a 3% increase on the base salary in 22 23, a 2.5% increase on the base salary in 24 25, and a 2% increase on the base salary in 24 25. It also provides a cap for future insurance premium increases to limit the employer's share of the cost to provide health, vision, and dental insurance. So moved. Support. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Beckler? Yes. Mr. Speaker? Yes. Motion carries. This time we'll move on to bus bids. We need a motion to authorize the superintendent and treasurer to accept the bus bids for the terminal bus services in Lima, Ohio, and to purchase three 72 passenger diesel powered buses at a cost of $288,717, which is approximately $96,238 each, minus a total train allowance of $5,800. Questions or discussion? I, I guess I just want to make something for the record. I mean, this is so we're getting three buses when it all nets out for about $115 thousand dollars correct so this is a huge grant this year from the state of ohio yes i mean that's that's just stupendous yep. thank you yeah. very good all right roll call mr murray yes mr miller yes mr smith yes mr vacula yes mr. Speaker. yes motion carried <clears throat> need to approve an agreement with north northwest ohio educational service centers to cooperatively participate in special education services for fiscal year 22-23 at an estimated cost of eight thousand three hundred seventy dollars, three. I'm sorry, let's try it again. Eight thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars, nine hundred fifty-nine. All right, so we'll lower that again. <laughs> eight hundred thirty-seven thousand nine hundred fifty-nine dollars and seventy-three cents. 
The board and Northwest Ohio Educational Service Center agree that $762,959.73 of this amount should be paid pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code 3313.845 or applicable law by having the amount deducted from the board's state foundation payment, with the remaining balance being invoiced and paid directly for the Northwest Ohio Educational Service Center. So moved. Questions or discussion? All right, roll call. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Miller, upstate. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Beckler? Yes. Yes, motion carries. At this time, Mr. Small, would you like to take over discussion and information? Yeah, I'm going to just relocate over here. I have some slides on the second discussion item I'd like to share. First item, just wanted to give an update on our locker room renovation expansion. Work continues on phase two of the project. All of lock work is now completed and painting is scheduled for this week. Once the painting is finished, interior finishes, interior finishes will begin and the project is on schedule to be fully complete the last week of May. So we've moved up a week from the first week of June, so that is good. Everything is on schedule or ahead of schedule. Any questions on the locker room project? Second item I wanted to talk about, we've been talking about a potential move from the fifth grade to the middle school. So we are exploring that shift for the future. I want to give a little background on why we started looking at this and some of the benefits if we do decide to move forward. Uh, there have been space concerns at the elementary. We've seen that from administration, teachers, as well as the surveys that we put out to the parents. So looking at where could we gain more space we do have a building enrollment imbalance between the three buildings. There's approximately 550 students in the elementary, 250 at the middle school, and 350 in the high school. So if there was a way to bring a grade up to the middle school that would create a little more parity between the buildings. We have some program limitations at the elementary, just due to age level with preschoolers and kindergarten. It's hard to put on programs that are going to apply to a kindergartner and a fifth grader at the same time. So those limitations also present program opportunities at the middle schools. We see students closer to the same age range. So we could do assemblies that would encompass all grade levels where that's hard to do at the elementary and be age appropriate. Some of the benefits, uh, improved transition between the buildings. We would look at a fifth and sixth grade cohort and then a seventh and eighth. So essentially the seventh and eighth would operate the way that it is. But bringing in a five, six, four heart allows for a little bit easier of a transition. So those two grades stay together, operate together, share staff. So we've got a step and then another step to the high school. Right now we're you know, jumping from fifth into that six, seven, eight model. And then after that to high school. So this adds another step in there, hopefully making a smoother transition for our students and allowing us to provide some opportunities to them at each of those grade levels. Uh, again, that difference in age from the kindergartner to the fifth grader, we would better be able to address age and maturity gaps. If uh, we move the fifth grade to the middle school, it would allow for some leadership training, begin career connections programming, peer interaction and supports where the kids are closer to the grade levels. And then we have the rocks and boss programs at the middle school where we could get the kids started a little bit earlier. Middle school right now has small classes. We would be able to maintain those smaller class sizes, typically between 15 to 20 students. One area of need is serving our gifted students at the middle school. We know that's a concern and moving the fifth grade up would allow us to serve them better. And again, getting leadership opportunities to the fifth graders at the middle school level and developing that through high school. That's one of the items on our strategic plan that we're gonna be making a focus on is leadership opportunities for our students. Scheduling options that would result from a move. We have additional time for math and ELA. They could do a double period in, in the schedule. We would have STEM and STEAM options that are not available currently at the elementary. And additional electives with music, career tech, and soft skill classes. So when we began looking at this, the whole motivation to continue, is it viable, is it a, a, something we should pursue, is what additionally can we offer the students? If there's not more opportunities for them, it's not worth pursuing. And we see a number of benefits that a move would open up 
for those classes. There's still areas to address. We're not looking at this for next year. Bell schedule would still need to be worked out when we have the fifth and sixth school heard on the same bells as the seventh and eighth. Would that mirror the high school? Classroom locations, bringing more students in, we would have to figure out you know, exactly where we're going to put them. What electives would we want to offer? And then how would we accommodate recess or flex time for those students who need a break in their day? So those are all items that would need to be looked at. So miscellaneous again, earliest we would be looking is the 23-24 school year. Has that been asked, you know, is this a cost savings move? No, it doesn't save money. It's can we provide more for our students? The other question that's come up, will that eliminate teaching positions? No. We would need all of the staff that we currently have. And then is there enough space by classrooms and lockers to bring another grade level up? And, and yes, we look at the historical numbers when the middle school was the high school. The numbers were larger than they would be with the fifth grade. So again, a lot of work would still need to be done in the next year. We're exploring what all of that looks like. <clears throat> Any questions? Um, I know you guys have talked to the fifth grade teachers and they were very receptive and lovely idea. How did the sixth grade teachers react? They have more questions. I guess mm -hmm. maybe a little less excited, more reservation. How is this going to work? Is there a concern? What does it look like? And, Space is again, teachers will need to move classrooms. That was their main concern, but they do see the value in offering additional opportunities for the students. Eric, as you, as you guys explore this, I'm interested in this fifth and sixth grade cohort idea. Um, as you as you start to work out the contours on that, I guess I, I don't lose track of recess time. I, I think fifth and it may be even sixth, honestly. Uh, maybe use a little run around. Okay. I see the value in it, and then a fifth had six would have as well. See so here listed that it's not a cost saving move. Do we anticipate any additional costs? Maybe one time cost for some furniture to get rooms up to speed with some flex furniture to allow for not a sustained increased cost. Thank you. The fifth grade teachers will live down here though. <clears throat> It's by, by union contract, they would need to be posted as it's moving from one building to another, but most of you decided to, to make that move. Any other questions? There'll be more information to come on this. We've kind of put it on hold for the remainder of this school year, and we'll be looking at it throughout next school year, developing a plan, and ultimately seeking board approval to make that, make that move. We'll provide you more information before we move. And ask for any board decision. The last item I had for the discussion was uh, reflecting on the community forum held on April 13th. How would the board like the administration to proceed with the policy 553001, which is our drug testing policy? Looking for direction from the board as how you'd like the administration to move forward. Um, when I talked to Eric, I asked him to put it as a discussion because there were Clear things that came out that we need to still address and think about. Um, I don't know if we want to go back to the committee we kind of did and have to so. yeah. go back and kind of revisit yeah. those areas and bring it back to the board as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have to have another committee meeting to fine tune some things. Do we want to keep the same committee we had before, Don and I, or do you want to change it up? I, I don't think we're really talking about much substance. I think at this point it was more just ironing out some of the definitions. Sort of yeah, I think it would be easier to keep the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eric, do you want to change it? Mark and Derek in there with us? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> um, if you shoot us a calendar, we can all look at it and okay, figure definitely. out. I prefer sooner than later because if yeah. we can get this rolling for next year, that's my goal. Okay. So, um, if you look at your calendar tomorrow, shoot us something and we can get the ball rolling on that. Um, all right, any further questions for Mr. Smola on those things? No? All right, let's start with Ms. Treheim. Good evening. Hopefully you can hear me through this mask. Um, wanted to let everybody know we are going to be finishing up our air testing with uh, third, fourth, and fifth graders this week coming up. We have 
their math assessments. And uh, following that, so the, the third, fourth, and fifth graders will all be taking math year assessments. The fifth grade will take science assessments the first week of May. So we'll be finishing that up here in the next couple of weeks. Teachers will begin working on class lists for next year, just so that everyone is aware. The class lists uh, will not be, um, we will not be doing a meet the teacher day. The teachers will be sending out welcome letters to their students um, at the end of a school year uh, to get those letters out so students and parents know which class they will be assigned to for next school year. What is the time frame for the teachers to get those out? We haven't discussed it yet, so I don't have a, a deadline for that. Um, I'm trying to remember how we did that last year. Uh, there was a lot of concern about last year. They were very late in the summer. A lot of parents had a lot of concern, so if we could get them out sooner, sure. that would be great. Um, Dental Health Associates in Swanton did donate a goodie bag for every student in preschool through grade five. They received things to help them with dental hygiene, and there was a video for the students to watch. So we're very appreciative of uh, Dental mm -hmm. Health Associates for donating those items to our students. The elementary Choir will have two performances on April 28th at 1.45 in the afternoon and 6.30 p.m. And both of those performances will be at the Cleanly Elementary Gym. We have some end of the year field trips being planned for our students, and those will be taking place in May. MVP is busy planning staff appreciation week. Um, we are very fortunate to have MVP. They make that a very special week for our staff, and we do appreciate everything that they do to make it uh, a special week. We have Great Read Week will be coming up uh, May 9th through the 12th. The second grade team is planning Great Read Week, and our theme this year is Camp Evergreen. We also have field day being planned for May 20th. This is a huge undertaking. It was very, very well received last year. We had a lot of volunteers, parents in the community that came together to help us with that. So we're looking forward to another good day. It was really hot last year, if I remember. And so um, hopefully we'll have nice weather for that as well. We have um, students being uh, focused on for their student of the week in on our new display in our cafetorium. The students are being featured for their kindness and different things that they do throughout the school that to be recognized by their class. And then the last day of school for kindergarten and kinder start will be May 20th. We will have kindergarten screening appointments for our incoming new kindergartners for the 20th. From 22, 23 school year. So we have a lot of things being planned yet here for the end of the school year. Do you have any other questions or concerns? You're not having a meet teacher day? We are not having a meet teacher day. Well, uh, what was the reason behind eliminating that? It gets, I, my kids love it. it. Well, we decided as a staff last year, first of all, when COVID came around, that was very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. It was just decided amongst the staff that it's sometimes it's, it makes the kids upset being, you know, immersed into a classroom where they don't know the teacher. We just, I don't really have an answer for why we okay. did Like I said, I just know my kids really enjoyed, enjoyed meeting their new teachers. Uh, something to look forward to for next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm going to apologize for my voice. I will try to make it short. It's not laughing, Eric. <laughs> um, we had our third quarter assembly um, awards. We had Lily Bolger, who was in sixth grade, Bella Salazar, seventh grade, and Sophia Goodson, who were eighth graders. They were a row student, showed respect, ownership, and worked hard. Um, we also had our honors breakfast. I want to thank the staff members come down and made the pancakes. This district staff helped out as well. Um, I want to thank the Country Charm Cafe. They donated the food at cost, so it was very cheap for us to do. <clears throat> and just a shout out to the art department for putting together the district art show. That's not all I got. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. there's no question. I'm not going to give any good ones. I send them your way. Get your email response. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Rupert. Um, Mr. Curtis. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, congratulate all of our students who participated in the events of last weekend. Um, and lots of, lots of amazing uh, products of art, as well as all the kids that have worked super hard to uh, participate in the music called the Comic Ground. So I really did a great job. Hopefully, everyone had a chance to come see it. It was a great, great opportunity for kids. Um, we are gearing up for the last leg of the year. Uh, academic awards, graduation, prom, after prom, lots of things coming up, FFA awards banquet as well. Um, the today is actually the last day to buy prom tickets online. So um, we are, uh, I think we're, last I looked, we're about 180 tickets sold before I think I came here. So uh, probably a couple last minute stragglers, but uh, we'll tie that up here at the end of the day and work on, work on making plans for that moving forward. Um, we have our senior breakfast and awards banquet coming up on May 13th. Uh, that's something that we'll have all, all Evergreen seniors are welcome to come to Evergreen High School at 7 o'clock, participate in a breakfast. Um, if any of the board members are interested, like we've done before, uh, helping them serve, serve seniors, just let me or Mr. Small know. And uh, happy, to, happy to coordinate that. It's always a neat time for, for kids to be able to have a a meal with their fellow classmates, I guess, before people kind of scatter in the summertime. We have, uh, we'll invite all, all senior parents if they want to come out to arrange for a visit at 8.30 to participate in the awards uh, ceremony. So it's always a neat opportunity. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to um, to welcome Ms. Alexis Howell. She's here tonight. She's just approved as our new vocational agriculture teacher. Um, Ms. Howell comes to us uh, from Southern Wells High School in Indiana, where she uh, holds a bachelor's degree currently in agri-science education from Ohio State University, and she's currently working on her master's degree in agri-science from Ohio State as well. Uh, she came very highly recommended. Um, she, over the course of her past three years at Southern Wells, she was able to build the program at Southern Wells to one of the top ag programs in the state of Indiana. So we're very excited to, to have her, and I know she's excited to get started. So, um, we have, uh, like, like uh, the middle school and the elementary school, we also began state testing here. Uh, we've already done our ELA state testing here last week. Got all makeups taken care of for those, and this week we'll work on uh, biology, American history, and government this week, and then we'll have math to follow up here in the middle year. So this is the first year that shifting to the traditional schedule where we have anyone and everyone, the vast majority of kids testing in the springtime. Uh, so we did some changes, obviously, in the way that we offer testing. And I think the first round of ELA testing was very nice. So, uh, looking forward to uh, looking forward to time about that. We also have uh, on the 28th of April, um, I didn't see, we have uh, we're working to dedicate uh, the softball fields to Bill Steck. Uh, so Bill Steck, is, as you all know, is uh, very involved in Lots of athletics here at Evergreen High School, especially baseball and softball. Uh, we intend on honoring Bill Steck uh, at approximately 4.45 to 4 or 5 o'clock start at softball nine on the 20th. So if you have a chance to, to make your way out to celebrate, uh, we got the Steck band and softball team. And that, uh, be a big so I think the boys are playing that for the game. So. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Dr. Kleinberg. Someone took the top, first topic, but the state testing. <laughs> so just going to touch on that real quick. Um, we will be getting our results back for the science, math, and social studies by approximately May 10th, which will be great. Um, and then we'll get our reading results back, our English results back in mid The other piece that we need to think about, too, is our high school students that are taking advanced placement classes. Their AP exams will be starting in early May, and we'll get those results back in July. Moving on, I think this is probably important for us to share out. We know that there's been learning gaps that have been created, obviously, between students coming in and out due to quarantines, illnesses, et cetera. So we are offering summer school to all students in grades kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, each building is going to look a little bit different, and we'll start on um, June 6th through the month of June. Uh, at the high school level, though, we are going to be offering credit recovery. It's going to be our main focus. And then we are also offering physical education. So students can earn physical education credit as part of summer school this year. Um, so we'll send out more information uh, at the end of April. A couple of changes that we need to be aware about 
uh, or aware of is our incoming ninth graders. So any ninth grade student that enters um, high school or ninth grade after July 1st of 2022 are going to be directly impacted by two House bills or Senate bills, Senate Bill 1 and Senate Bill 68. Senate Bill 1 is the financial literacy component. So every incoming freshman will need to have a half a credit of financial literacy at some point during their high school career. We're focusing on making that probably 11th, 12th grade to just a part of a separate um, class. That half a credit then can be actually substituted out for one of the math credits. So, uh, Senate Bill 68, though, is very different. So that one um, is in the works as far as um, the Ohio Department of Education. It has to do with um, instruction that focuses on at least one course um, as far as the students' interactions with peace officers. So the Ohio Department of Education is developing a model curriculum. So once that comes out, then we will integrate that into one or more of our high school classes. It's going to be uh, focusing on demonstrations, some role playing. Um, my initial thoughts that will probably be American history um, because all of our students take it here. Um, potentially, we even add it into American government. But as we get more information from ODE or the Ohio Department of Education, we will actually share that out. The next one that has an impact on um, as far as um, Senate bills or House bills is House Bill 436. And we've talked a lot about it as the dyslexia law. With that being said, we, starting next year, every student in grades K or kindergarten through third grade will be given a universal tier one screener. What that is yet, we don't know. We have not received an approved list from the Ohio Department of Education. So once we get that, we will in integrate that in. As well as any student that enters um, first through sixth grade, that transfers in the middle of the year from another district, we also have to provide them a universal screener. In addition to that, though, our teachers, um, there's a time frame or a timeline that we have to provide at least 18 instructional hours of professional development. It's going to be focusing on identifying the characteristics of dyslexia and understand the pedagogy of instructing students with dyslexia. So to start that out this August, we are already <laughs> training here on campus. Um, box 8 through 13 is five days. Um, it's Orton Gillingham. And that is one of the professional development opportunities provided by the state that we can use. Uh, and we will actually be bringing an outside trainer in from the Institute for Multisensory Education uh, and open that to other districts as well. The last thing I really want to talk about, though, is just the community partnerships that we continue to build here at Evergreen. Obviously, you are aware of the one that we just had with our career day at the high school for our juniors and seniors to the Fulton County Economic De Development Office. We also are going to be partnering with the Ohio State Extension Office on May 4th. We are going to be hosting uh, real, real, money, real Money, Real World Simulations for our students in 8th grade and 12th grade. We'll provide them some lessons beforehand and then uh, simulations. Those simulations will also be partnered with community members in the, in the area. And then lastly, we are also partnering with um, the Amboy uh, Volunteer Fire Department and Metamora Fire Department and doing a mock accident on May 5th for our juniors and seniors. And that'll be here on campus. So we continue to build those partnerships with our community um, to expand the, the needs and the growth of our students here at Any questions? Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Samola. Yeah, I just had one item. I wanted to thank our EEA and OC reps for their approach to contract negotiations this year. Both groups put the needs of the students as the focus, and we were able to collaboratively work to ensure stability and progress in the district for the next three years. So just wanted to say thank you to both of those groups. All right. Is there any board members with questions or concerns? No more. No more. I like to see the whole part of the day. But I can take a, it through. We do. We will host a, an open night for the community as soon as the phase two is done. I want, I want the community to come in and see all the locker rooms and all the nice. space. I didn't realize there was going to be a hallway with that many doors. You know it's I mean? confusing. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of, do we want to schedule a walkthrough for the board this summer? That oh, way, the kids aren't here. We can. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys prefer what month? 
Do you want to wait until everything's done? Well, that's May, so look at June. June add it to. Do you want to add it to before or after the board meeting, or do you want it? Before the board meeting, what time can we get here? Four? Give us two hours before the meeting. Okay, four o'clock at the June meeting. <clears throat> Is there any other questions, concern, discussion? All right. And at this time, we need a motion for the members of the Evergreen Local Board of Education, Superintendent and Treasurer, mm -hmm. invite guests to go into executive session for the following reasons. To concern the appointment of public employees, Ohio Revised Code 121.22G1. One. Roll call. 